Hello. I had a student project, and this happened uh, years ago, and I had two tables, and the one table was employees, and the other table was when they were terminated, and I asked the students whether any employees had been accessing the network after their termination date. However, it was very nice, and you have to do a join and things like that, and, uh, but I didn't really know why we should care so much about employees accessing the network after termination. So we'll start off with a bit of uh, terminology there. Everything to do with insider threats and insider risk and the insider program. I'm not sure whether you know these terms. It was all new to me uh, up until about a year or so ago. Well, we have a number of surveys. One of them is the uh, Ponemon survey, and they talk about the criminal or malicious insider. And I see 1,700 uh, cases, and I'm thinking, hmm. And then I see the average cost per incident. And we have three surveys going back uh, two years and two years and two years. And we see this costs more than $600,000 on average per time. So this piqued my interest as well. We have PwC and they do a survey. And when I looked at their results, what interested me was on the bottom left over there. And when they talk about low impact, uh, uh, low impact and low risk, they have current employee and former employee. However, the people surveyed there were chief executive officers. And so it does turn out that they do underestimate the risk of insiders in the C-suite. This is uh, Carnegie Mellon, and this is their very good um, seventh edition as such. And we talk about research on insider incidents, and you can see the first sentence there talking about the risk being real and substantial. So I still haven't got much of a handle on exactly what's happening there. They talk about having a database, but it's proprietary, and I see right up top there, sabotage, 146, but they don't give you access to their, to their database. They talk about the top five stressors, and we can see there the top two, termination and resignation. And I still don't have a very good handle on what, what's actually happening and what do people do. They have best practices. They have, I don't know how many of these, we can see maybe 20 something. And right over there, number two, a formalized insider risk management program. Very good. Nice start. We go to the next page and we talk about, uh, where does it say about uh, the employees leaving? Yeah. Comprehensive workforce member termination procedure. Not bad. And then number 22, learn from past incidents. However, we don't know much about the past incidents because their database is proprietary. This is the FBI who also recognize insider threats, and you'll be happy to know our FBI are completely up to date here with all these cases being more than 10 years old. Uh, if you talked about, uh, somebody mentioned the dinosaur just a few uh, minutes ago. So now I thought, okay, let me, let me get something happening here. So I wrote the paper, and my question is, what exactly is it that they do? And so the only way that I could find out what they really do is by looking at news reports. 